This is about as bad as it effing gets. If you live in Canada, I'm sure many people are facing a very similar reality right now, and we're just gonna react to this story because it's I wild. I wanna know how the hell people in Canada are even living. I generally consider myself a positive person. I'm like resourceful, but some stuff happened around the property and like, well, I know I'll never truly be homeless. Like I have family to live with and you know, like I have options. Like I'm luckier than a lot of other people, but. So as far as I can tell, she clearly owns some kind of property that she was over leveraged in and some kind of emergency came up that she clearly couldn't afford. And now she's considering moving back with her parents. How the hell is anyone existing in Canada? Like, I just, I feel trapped. And like, like, I just got a good job. I started in September, but even with that job, it pays less than 40 grand a year. You cannot live in any major city in Canada anymore. Vancouver, Toronto on 40 grand a year. It is damn near impossible. Hell, we have had to live in our parents' basement for a decade to be able to afford a condo in Toronto. And between me and my fiance, luckily I have a significant other. So we have combined incomes that will probably lead us to making closer to a couple hundred thousand a year, which we're very blessed to have, by the way. But that is literally what it takes at this point because, man, 40 grand a year, man, rent alone. I think a one bed, one bath is like 22 to 2,500. You want to have a two bed, two bath? You're looking at 40 grand a year in, in annual rent it's crazy and it's a job that requires a, like education and even on that job like i still can't do shit i can't buy anything i can't afford the rent these days like i'm i'm just i'm i'm just feeling so much despair and so she said she can't afford the rent these days, but she was saying something happened around the house. I'm curious if she owns or if she's actually renting. If you're younger right now, the only thing I can recommend doing, I'm mentioning this in a lot of my videos, get into trade so you can be paid to be educated, move to Alberta, at west, out east, somewhere away from the major cities where you can afford to get ahead because she's in her 30s and it becomes a lot rougher to unroot yourself, especially when you get family ties. That was the issue we had. We wanted to go to Alberta. We could have semi-retired over there, but we, we love our family too much and to give up these constant experiences on a weekly basis I, I think isn't worth the money considering we could afford it but this this is where things get real hard in your 30s if you're stuck like this I know I'm normally like really really positive but I'm just like how is everyone else and are you okay because the answer is probably no and I know I'm lucky I don't I don't have kids I have like good family that will support me but you remember years ago, like in the 80s, 70s, people were having like four or five kids in their early and mid 20s. One dude would be working. You'd have a housewife. Those days no longer exist. GDP growth doesn't come from having kids anymore. It comes from immigration. And that is semi surreal and odd, I think, to say the least. Just I feel like I can't stay here, but I can't move anywhere else because anywhere else I move to. I'm going to be charging like I'm the landlords are just going to charge me like $2,500 a month in rent like unless I move into the middle of literally nowhere where there is zero jobs and I semi disagree with that again I think Alberta is a very much more affordable place to live you can rent for a heck of a lot less than probably a thousand less than 2,500 a month to get even a one bed one bath I think maybe Edmonton or something and there are jobs out there I, I I know tons of people that don't live in Ontario that have much more comfortable lives working more nominal uh, you know different jobs um, just just to say the least I, I think she needs to be a little bit more hopeful on that side I'm just I'm just feeling really overwhelmed and like I don't know <laughs> there's a part of me that just wants to say F it and just get a whole bunch of credit cards and just travel and just like get out of Canada because like I, I know it's bad everywhere I, I really do but again i don't think it's bad everywhere and giving up and thinking credit cards are the answer is probably not the most prudent thing to do but we don't know her circumstance i think she needs to go on like caleb hammer and kind of break down her finances and sit down with somebody that can give her some direction because right now she has no direction um she's clearly in a rut and i think she needs to find the stepping stones required so she can have a strategy and a plan that can relieve that anxiety and relieve that stress i think that's what ends up happening to a lot of people to get overwhelmed and they don't sit down and start formulating like the best opportune ways to get out of it and it's never easy usually the decisions are very hard again requiring to move uh different look for different jobs and see just what's out there right <sighs> i don't know i just 
33 years old. Like, I was really hoping that I could, at the very least, afford, you know, a small house. I don't even want, I don't want 3,100 square feet bullshit. I just want, I just want something small, 500 square feet, even less. And yet, it's just, it's just, it's so fucking expensive. Like, I don't. Yeah, again, like, this is the reality that hits so many people, and I, I was arguing with someone on TikTok, and they blocked me because of it, and they said the solution was to get mad and go vote differently, whereas I've never relied on the government to get ahead, and unfortunately, real estate is a supply and demand metric. There's places where real estate doesn't go up a lot in value because there's no demand in those areas, right? So to think that you want something, want and need are obviously two different things, but when you want something, like, you need to be willing to put yourself in action and, and demand it from the market and, and earn those high valued skills in the marketplace because nothing is ever handed to you in life and um, you know I, I people kind of maybe get caught up in their parents dream of what happened 20 or 30 years ago but that's no longer the reality and if you're not willing to face that and fight for it and you know do the requirements to put yourself in the position to get it which nothing in life is guaranteed anyways heck every day you wake up and walk outside is a blessing kind of reminds me of that saying like if I could give you 10 million dollars tomorrow but the caveat is you only have one day to live how, how much do you value that 10 million dollars all of a sudden uh, you know, so maybe you should be living every single day like that, right? Like, you know, um, and and just uh, you know, t try not to take too much for granted. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, so honestly, she needs to sit down with uh, a financial advisor, uh, look at her financing, and figure out where she's at right now and what she's going to be required to do, and maybe go live with your parents. I don't think there's anything shameful about moving back in with your parents at 33 years old. You know, lots of people that did it. Hell, we lived in our parents' basement for 10 years to put ourselves in this position. Um, so I think that's going to be her best bet at this point. Uh, but it's really hard to tell what's going on without knowing her personal circumstance.